I get hit good. Hello there folks and welcome to Bullets for Bucks. My name's Steven and today we're gonna to compare the Saco S20 Precision against the Hawa Orx. So let's start with the Saco. Has about a one inch thick recoil pad, removable spacers for length of pull, flush cups on both sides, adjustable comb with a push button, works really, really nice. Um, sometimes it can stick just a little bit though. Has M-lock on the bottom here so you can mount a monopod or a bag riding rail. Has a nice cutout here, almost a 90 degree pistol grip, some texturing for grippiness and nice palm swell. If you remove these two Torx head screws, you can actually swap out this buttstock with a thumb hole hunter style stock or break it down for uh, traveling more uh, compact, which is kind of nice. It features a aluminum mini chassis within that the receiver beds to, so excellent bedding system and excellent structural integrity within, although the outside kind of has a cheap feel and look to it with that exterior plastic. Features a tactical bolt knob and a 60 degree bolt throw. The bolt knob is removable. Um, if you remove the bolt here, you can see that it's polished, got three locking lugs, uh, coned bolt head, uh, plunger ejector Saco style extractor, runs insanely smooth. I mean, just like glass. Has three position safety all the way rear, locks the bolt and keeps it from firing. One forward, you can fire and manipulate the bolt. And then you can push this tab right next to the safety, which is why I call it a three position safety and remove the bolt while it's on safe. Has a plastic trigger guard, would have liked to see that be metal. Has a tab release for the magazine system in the front. And it's a polymer magazine. It's five plus one or three plus one capacity, depending on the caliber selection. Really love the magazine system. It actually works very well, even though it's polymer. The receiver on this um, has a notch in the front and the back that the aluminum mini chassis beds into. Has a zero MOA partial Picatinny scope base integral to the receiver. Would like to see that be full Picatinny and 20 MOA. In my opinion, that was a mistake. Has a cocked indicator at the rear. Features an amazing trigger that just down to about two, two and a half pounds. Single stage, you can get it in uh, two stage if you want. It's one of the best factory triggers I've ever felt in my life. And you can actually adjust the blade front and back for length of pull as well. Foreign features a fully free floated 24 inch Cerakoted straight fluted barrel. Thread 5 8 by 24 does not come with a muzzle brake. Has M-lock on the end of the forend, on the sides, bottom, and flush cups for your QD sling. Um, the forend on this is about a medium width. It's a little bit flattened out on the bottom for easy bag riding, um, but relatively traditional in most regards. This rifle comes in at a weight of 8.6 pounds and it's 47 inches long and 300 wind mag. Now here I have the Howa Orcs. And this is actually a six millimeter Creedmoor, but we'll be using the specifications from the 300 PRC. One thing to note is that the, the, the uh, Saku is a 300 wind mag. It does not, it's not available in 300 PRC at this time, um, which is something to note. So if you wanna get 300 PR6 or 65 PRC or six millimeter Creedmoor, you're gonna to have to uh, get the Howa Orcs. Um, this features about a three quarter inch thick rubber recoil pad. It has removable spacers as well for length of pull. It has flush cups at the rear for mounting your QD sling. Um, sim similar design here, but it doesn't have the M lock on the back of the buttstock. It has a cutout, and then it has an adjustable comb height as well. But this is a post, it's not push button, and these are aftermarket finger adjustable screws. Normally you have to use like an Allen head key to or raise or lower the comb height. You can actually swap out this pistol grip with like any AR pistol grip, but this is a very nice uh, rubberized pistol grip. I like it's got like a medium palm swell to it. Kind of has an integral thumb shelf here built into the chassis. And this is a monolithic aluminum chassis with a hard anodized finish as well. And then coming forward, you have um, a hack two-stage trigger. It's not really user adjustable, not nearly as nice as the Saco, but it, it, you know, it comes about two and a half to three and a half pounds. Has an AICS compatible magazine system. Um, it's a little bit rougher, not as smooth, and the release tab behind the magazine instead of in front of the magazine. Then coming forward, you have M-lock slots on the full length of the bottom of the chassis. And on the side, you have like these plastic covers and you can swap those out with different covers if you want with different colors. Or the 300 PRC features a 24 inch uh, hammer forged barrel. And then it's threaded 5 8 by 24 and it does not come with a muzzle brake. And the Howa Orcs in 300 PRC is uh, nine pounds. 
So just a tiny bit heavier than the Saco S20 Precision configuration. Now the Hunter configuration comes in about 7.4 pounds. All right, the chassis on the Howe Orx is made by MDT. It's an MDT Orx chassis uh, made in Canada, just so you know. And then the receiver on this one, is all one piece, has an integral recoil lug, so excellent bedding. And then it has a three position safety all the way rear, locks the bolt and keeps it from firing. One forward, you can remove the bolt, but you can't fire it. All the way forward, you can remove the bolt and fire it. Has a push tab on the side instead of like a lever. Has two locking lugs, a plunge ejector, Saco style extractor, toolless firing pin removal, and it's a 90 degree bolt throw versus the Saco that has a 60 degree bolt throw. And it doesn't run nearly as smooth and it definitely is louder in the receiver. All right, so now that we've gone over some of the basics of these rifles, let's go ahead and take them to the range and see how they perform. Like it hit good. All right, so starting with the Saco, now that we're back from the range, it, it its fit, fuel, and function is phenomenal. Running the action in this just feels buttery smooth. It feeds, extracts, uh, ejects like a dream, shoots extremely accurately. Now with the very small factory sampling of factory ammunition shot of this, it's impossible to say that one's gonna be more inherently accurate than the other. They're both easily capable of sub MOA accuracy. No complaints, love the ergonomics, fit, feel, and function of the S20, and the trigger is phenomenal. If I was going to go hunting just right out, I would obviously pick the Saco S20 as it's a little bit lighter. You can swap it out for the thumb hole hunter stock, and it's even lighter than still. You can also take this down for traveling. If I was, so if I was somebody that likes to shoot a little bit target during the week, but then go hunting on the weekends without you know really long tracks, I'd definitely pick the Saco S20 for, for that hybrid or multi-use uh, function. Now, taking a look at the Howa Orcs, the Howa Orcs, um, the fit, fuel, and function feels much uh, cheaper, but not like cheap. It just feels like um, they tried to save a lot of money and it does come in at a much lower price point. So if that's important to you, then obviously that's gonna matter. Um, the action doesn't run as smooth, but it functions just as well. So the bolt lifts a little higher and it doesn't sound or run as smoothly feeling wise, but it functions just as good. It extracts, ejects, uh, everything fine. Uh, the magazine system is a little bit tougher and seems to take me a little bit longer to work. It's just not quite as smooth or doesn't seem quite as natural, but it's AICS compatible. And uh, so that's nice. Uh, it, you know, it doesn't have all the fit, fuel, and functions of the Saco S20, but it shoots phenomenal. The receiver and barrel for this Hawa is made in Japan, and the Saco is made in Finland. Both are excellent rifles. Amazing. Now, the sample I have here is a six millimeter Creedmoor, so it's inherently a little easier to shoot more accurately because it doesn't have as much recoil, in my opinion, um, and it's easily capable of quarter MOA. Both extremely accurate, great rifles. If I was gonna shoot uh, entry-level PRS and I had a smaller budget, I'd pick the, pick the How Orcs. Um, if I was gonna shoot beginner ELR and I wanted like the 300 PRC, you can't get that with a Saka, so I'd probably pick the How Orcs. If, now, if I'm looking for a rifle that I can do uh, precision long range and hunting with, I'm definitely going to pick the Saco uh, S20 um, because it's a, you can take it down, you can make it more compact, you can swap out the butt stocks for a lighter butt stock. It's a little bit lighter to start with anyways, and its fit, fuel, and function is phenomenal. So I'm going to pick this if I'm looking for like that hybrid style rifle versus a designated chassis rifle for precision long range shooting. Hope you enjoyed this comparison of the Saco S20 Precision versus the Hawa Oryx. Thanks for watching Bullets for Bucks. Check out this next video and subscribe.